Welcome back to our show, Ways to Love Your Money. I'm Elizabeth Dawson, and on today's show, we're going to have a great interview with my uh, my co-host for the day, which is Katie Steck. She's our case manager, my junior advisor here in the practice, and um, just kind of a lighthearted conversation about your, you know, her relationship with money, and then she kind of picks on me about a couple things. So I think you'll enjoy it. And before we get started with that interview, I kind of wanted to talk about the purpose of why ways to love your money really exists. And it really started with with the book that I wrote, Wealth by Design. And it's such a simple read that we encourage people to just pick it up, give us a call if you want a copy, um, email us if you want a copy. And it's a simple step-by-step -step process about how to look at money in a different way and what, it, what your relationship is with money. So uh, part of our conversation that Katie and I had today was, you know, what's, what's, you know what do those goals look like? Uh, what is your wish list? And I think that this pretty much maps out in about 45 minutes, if you're a pretty quick reader, uh, a foundation for you to think about things all at one time versus just looking at you know, the hierarchy of the pyramid of how financial planning works. Most people get very excited about the stock market, and so they start with the top of that pyramid. But as you travel down really where the foundation of that pyramid is, it's all about you. It's about your relationship with money. It's setting up your insurances correctly and putting down the foundation that you want to set your life forward with. What makes you feel comfortable with um, having so much money in the bank? If you're not comfortable with having less in the bank, then keep more money in the bank. It's your peace of mind. Or at least having liquidity. Now, it's not just about the, the sexy appeal of how the stock market works. You have to have this hierarchical period, period of how your financial plan looks um, to develop for you. So, so with this simple read, which you can even get um, a copy from our website, elizabethwithanesdawson.com, we encourage you to do so. It'll click you right over to Amazon and it'll get you taken care of. You can even get the audio version, which quite a few of our clients have done in the past because it takes them a little while to sit down and read a book even for 45 minutes to be you know, you know, totally focused. Uh, the funny thing is, is that if you do read um, the book by listening to it on audio, the majority of our clients will go back and say, I want the hard copy because I want to go and make new notes. So it's kind of like a, a workbook that way. How does this affect you? I'm not sure yet, but stay tuned. We're going to have our interview with Katie Steck, and I hope you enjoy it. And we're back, and I have my co-host for today, Miss Katie Steck. She's in our practice, and she's my kind of cohort in everything that we do. And um, she's with me day by day by day, probably the most um, spent time with me every day, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? So uh, she's probably sick of me by now, but now we, we've, we're kind of incorporating her a little bit more on the show. So yeah, thank you for having me. You're today. welcome. You're welcome. So I know we wanted to have this a little bit more lighthearted and kind of talk about a relationship with money, but then I think Katie's going to ask me some questions too about how I've had my relationship with money recently. So, so welcome, Katie. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. So what's new with you? I mean, you've got, um, I've known you for a while, but you know, if we kind of rewind, I guess, a couple <laughs> years, uh, what do you think your relationship with money was before we met? Well, I think that I've always had a desire to save money and, and be mindful of how I'm spending mm -hmm. it. But I don't think I really had a plan. Mm -hmm. Like I just was saving when I could and trying to put money away, but it ultimately probably got spent along the way. And so I think through going through our process and, and being more mindful of where that money's mm -hmm. going and, and being more productive with it to really work towards goals and mm -hmm. put it away for the future and have an emergency fund and mm -hmm. things like that has really made a difference. A little bit more structure. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think that's probably the missing link for so many people is that they're working yeah. hard to make it. Yeah, yeah I think and, they do that all the time. And they want to spend it, but there's no structure for mm -hmm. you know the what ifs that happen and the right. things that we want in our life to happen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, would you say that maybe mom or dad or family members, aunts, uncles, grandparents, did they have an influence on how you had a relationship with money? Yeah, I think my mom always and my dad too always taught me to save. Even from when we were little, it was put half of your money, half of your allowance and savings, and half uh, you could spend. Um, and I know my brother was always way better at that than me. Even <laughs> even though he was younger and his allowance was smaller, I swear he always had more in his really? savings than I ever did. Was it competitive? <laughs> was it competitive between um, you two? 
A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I, he, he's always been a good saver. He's always yeah. been that bargain shopper, too. My mom and I joke about that all the time, that <laughs> even when there was, like, the, the little... Um, uh, those book fairs at school. Yes. He'd come home with like a whole pile of books and was like, I got these for 25 cents. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we've always had that kind of mentality growing up. Um, my, my grandpa was the same way. He was a t- teacher and was probably retired longer than he was working, mm-hmm. but always had money, plenty of money in the bank and, and had plenty to do what he wanted. So I think that we just kind of always grew up with that idea of put some away. Yeah. Was it more bargain shopping or was it um, put money away for a certain reason or just to put money away? Is there a purpose? I think it was kind of both. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there was always the put money away when you were little. It was for college and Mm -hmm. um, just whatever the future meant. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think we've, as a family, we've always had this kind of get a deal. Can I get a deal? That's that's awesome. And I know your brother has a life event happening here yes. soon. Yes, he's getting married in nine days. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So is he being a bargain shopper or is his soon wife to be being a bargain shopper or is she know. more the spender or the, you know, because there's a, usually a spender and a saver I in a, a relationship. I she's the spender. Oh boy. But, uh, I'm planning the rehearsal dinner. And uh, I told her I'm coming in under budget. And she said my brother would be really happy. So. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Oh, my gosh. I can only imagine because, yes, I mean, we all have spending habits. We all have saving habits. But I know I've even shopped with you in a mall before. when We, we went to, what was it, Mall of America? Yeah. And you were looking for the little deals. I'm like, oh, well, these are good. But you're like, no, that's too much. <laughs> and it was just these sandals that you were, you know, yeah. that you wanted, yeah. you had your mind on. Mm-hmm. But you like to shop. I do like to shop. You, you probably shop more than I shop. I like to I like the activity of going, even if I don't walk away with anything. More window shopping? Yeah, yeah. See Maybe what's new? One, one special item. Yeah, every time something to remember your experience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'll be back at Mall of America next week. So. That's awesome. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, I have some time. Is it open? Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> Under these circumstances, we don't know what's open or what's not. Yeah, that's true. Oh, my. Yeah. But you were just on a trip, too, I think. I know I was. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you go? I would almost say and admit to this group of people watching that maybe I probably spent a little bit more than I should have, but I did save and put money aside for it. So if we do those things with a purpose, then it's a little bit more acceptable. But yeah, there was a couple little purchases there. We went to Napa. Oh, I've heard it's beautiful. It is beautiful. We were actually there during fires. <laughs> so so it was very smoky, very, I mean, I smelled like smoke when I got home. Oh my gosh, I got uh, on fire. Yeah, but I, I literally, uh, we enjoyed it. Uh, my motto is, is if you're going to drink wine, drink good wine. Um, don't drink bad wine. But um, I, we pretty much enjoyed that for sure. And, you know, I didn't do anything. I didn't spend my mortgage payment. You know, I didn't spend, <laughs> you know, the, the, the payroll for the office or something like that. I spent money that I had put aside that I had for it. Uh, but it was a good time. You know, it was yeah. a good experience. It's not the cheapest place to go visit, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we made the most out of it. Yeah. And under these circumstances, I mean, that's the vacation of the year. So mm-hmm. so uh, it's making the most out mm-hmm. of it. So when you go back to, you're going to Wisconsin, right? Yeah, we're going there for a few days. With yeah, family first. Mm-hmm. that's good. That's yeah. good. And so when you go to do that, I know you've been saving throughout the year to do that. Yeah, I mean, we have buy our plane tickets and that. Luckily, we are staying with family, so yeah. it's not a huge expense. But yeah, yeah. we we prepare. We go back twice mm-hmm. a year, and mm-hmm. um, that's yeah. why I know you like your miles. Yes, I do like my miles. We used our miles on our trip. We changed our flight and got some miles back. Actually. Wow! Ooh, conserved. <laughs> so, it's a deal. <laughs> but it is. I mean, it's a great time to fly uh-huh. price wise right now. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I know you kind of shared with how you your relationship was money, with money was before, but now has it changed since? I mean, we've met since the work that we do with our clients has that has that relationship with money changed now? Yeah, I think especially with the people we work with and and what I see every day, I think just thinking more of the future and having specific goals mm-hmm. um, has really changed. We bought a house through this process. Um, and, and looking towards maybe getting something bigger in the future and mm-hmm. having that goal in mind and, and like really narrowing down what that looks mm-hmm. like and mm-hmm. having a specific goal, not just, oh yeah, that'd be nice one day, but mm-hmm. really talk, thinking about, well, what does that look like and what does it take to get there? So I think that's really been a yeah. big, 
Well, we, we talk about something in our in our process called the wish list mm -hmm. because I think what scares people is when they see goals. And, you know, most people say, oh, I don't know even what to say about goals, right? But when you hear a wish list, it's kind of like, um, well, you know, if money was not an issue, I mean, money is an issue, but if money wasn't an issue and we could figure this out, what would we want to mm -hmm. accomplish? You know, whether it's materialistic, whether it's monetary, or whether it's even just personally or spiritually. Mm -hmm. So what do you usually say when people talk about the wish list? Well, if you write it down, it's going to happen. Yeah. In fact, we were talking to our client yesterday who hadn't thought about it. The second we started writing it down, she was like, oh, this and this? And yeah. Send this to me so we can make sure it happens. Yes. It's exciting. And that's a client <laughs> that has been a client of ours for years. Yeah. So it's not just in the beginning of the process to write down goals. It's throughout the years of working on this because this is an investment in you, you know, mm -hmm. your your well-being and your future. And so do you feel like you're doing goals and everything like that every year or wish list items each year now? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I don't feel like my, my goals change very much. Mm -hmm. I like to go on a trip every year and just making sure I'm mm -hmm. planning for what that next one is mm -hmm. and, um, and just, yeah, thinking ahead and... So have you have you dreamt for like what what life will look like in ten years, or even fifteen, or is it hard for you to look out that it's far? It's really hard to think that far. Mm -hmm. I think more like three, five, mm -hmm. and even that, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I think the average person is looking one year at a time. Yeah, and we even proposed a few different things with the people that we've been privileged to work with to even do the end of 2020 goals, you know, wish list mm -hmm. items because. I think for the first nine months of the year, it's been kind of robbed. Yeah, absolutely. You know, our, our, our year has been, you know, somewhat robbed from us. So what are we doing to make the best of it? And, mm -hmm. you know, taking fear out of our vocabulary, taking, gosh, I'm so scared, all those things, anxiety. Well, what if uh, we have something that's fun to experience? I mean, mm -hmm. you're going to go on a plane for how many hours? Five, probably total. How do you feel about that, having to wear a mask for five hours? Probably six or seven because you have to go through the airport. Yeah, it's going to be a long day. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a long day. I don't think it scares me to be on the plane. I think the the in-between, getting off the plane, going through the airport, mm -hmm. is kind of more, um, I don't want to even say nerve-wracking, but I just think there's more risk there mm -hmm. than even just sitting in your place on the plane mm -hmm. and getting off. So it'll definitely be a different experience this time flying than it's been in a long yeah. time. Well, it, I mean, I flew last mm -hmm. week. Um, and uh, what was interesting to me is going through security was, I thought was going to be a lot worse. It was mm -hmm. pretty much a piece of cake. I'm not sure that that's going to last. But uh, it was easy to get through security. Uh, we had a few extra minutes, you know, to get some breakfast. What I noticed is that... Um, like they had tables where people could stand around everything, those weren't clean. Oh, so that made us yeah. feel, kind of feel a little uncomfortable about mm -hmm. that. And then sitting in the seats, you know, it was like every other seat, unless you're with a family member, you could mm -hmm. sit in those seats. So there wasn't really anyone patrolling, but there should have been someone kind of going back and cleaning. Yeah. But I will tell you this, um, the plane, the planes um, were extremely clean. That's what I've heard. And cleaner than even all my years of flying, like clean. Yeah. I mean, you still want to be aware. I, I know that we've traveled sometimes, and mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe you want to take your little, you know, disinfectant wipes or whatever, just mm -hmm. if you're going to use your tray. But everything was clean, and even though they offered us water or whatnot, they weren't mm -hmm. offering it much, but little snacks mm -hmm. or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but it was, uh, it wasn't um, anxiety-ridden to fly. Mm -hmm. Just kind of the airport itself was a little, yeah, that's little kind of different. What I thought might yeah, so I, I wasn't expecting that because, you know, you go to a restaurant because, I mean, hey, we're going to go to restaurants, right? They're clean. Oh, yeah. But, you know, that was one thing I saw. Mm -hmm. Not that yeah. I'm trying to say anything bad about our airport, but. <laughs> no, but there's just no opportunity to be outside. I think they're yeah. comfortable going out and about in San Diego, mm -hmm. being outside, doing mm -hmm. things outside. But when you're stuck inside for that amount of time, yeah, it's definitely different. So is the weather still going to be good in Wisconsin when you go up? Yeah, it's supposed to rain a couple days and yeah. then be sunny in 78. So wow. hopefully the wedding is... Is the wedding outside or inside? No, it's inside. Okay. Inside a hotel. Inside a hotel. Okay, gosh. Yeah. So they're able to do that and accommodate inside. Yes, so. So it's so different than California, right? Yeah. 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 The Midwest definitely is different and state by state is yeah. very different. So is it going to be limited by people or is it still going to be a fairly big wedding? Um, I, don't, I don't know, yeah. actually. Yeah, I think it's interesting. 
Yeah, I think half, half maybe half of who they invited mm-hmm. is coming. So mm-hmm. I think, I'm guessing maybe like a hundred people, which is still mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. So that's a lot of people right now. Yeah. Well, if we can kind of fast forward, and I know you said it's hard for you to look past three or five years. Well, what's one of your wish list items that you want to share with, you know, the filming here today? Well, I think what's really been on my mind, and I've talked about it a couple times, is I think, especially we see this with everybody and um, with the pandemic and being stuck mm-hmm. at home so much, um, I think my husband and I are talking more and more about wanting to get ready to buy a house with a yard. <laughs> well, we just had a fireside chat last night. Apparently yeah. right now is the time to sell, so yeah. it might be the time to buy too. It's kind of a little unknown, but I know Jonathan told us that he has kind of like this uh, little protection in there mm-hmm. if you can't identify a new home that you can get out of your yeah. escrow. Um, I think things are happening so quickly that you just have to design it, right? Right. Yeah. Everything is bu- about you know designing it mm-hmm. and the way you want it to be, yeah. how you want to manifest it. I don't know if we want to give up our condo. Oh, we like it. Yeah. It's a catch-22. Well, you have time. You have time. Yeah. We're not in a hurry. Just on the mind. It's on the mind. Yeah. Well, I mean, your four walls are something that are really important to where you can actually spend time and enjoy time and really, you know, experience even relationships and such like that, too. Mm -hmm. You do live in a great location, so it's it's centrally located. We like it. I mean, being able to walk to the grocery store and things like that. So is there anything you want to leave our our viewers or listeners with today since you're our co-host today? Um, I think just as a piece of advice is make those goals and make them real and write them down and make a plan. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> we tell true. and we tell people that if you write it down on that wish list, that's what we're working yeah. so hard to be able to create. If you're not ready to work with a financial professional, that's fine. But think about the wish list. You know, think about maybe this weekend you get a glass of wine or whatever your beverage is. Look at the stars with your partner or your spouse and just kind of say, gosh, what are we working so hard for? What is life all about? And um, maybe start writing those things down. I think that our society has kind of forgotten that. Mm -hmm. I think we've kind of forgotten to kind of dream and plan and wish and hope. And um, maybe they're just thinking, gosh, how am I going to get through this pandemic? Well... There's a there's a right way and a wrong way, but just remember one of our one of our dear friends who was actually on the show a couple weeks ago, Grace. She said, you know, here's the facts. Hundred years ago in 1917, well, 103 years ago, um, we had a pandemic back then. There's probably not many of us alive from that. So mm-hmm. this is the first one in our lifetime, but they survived. Many more people died. Many more people died back then, um, and they survived. The world recovered. Mm-hmm. The you know the economy recovered. The country recovered. So if we know the facts, then hey, we can kind of car- compartmentalize that a little bit, yeah. and just kind of get through this venture together. So, thanks for being on the show with me today. Thank thanks you. for being my cohort and and everything that we do um, every single day. It's a privilege to work with Katie, and it's a joy. And uh, just uh, couldn't be more proud of of uh, my my junior <laughs> advisor, case manager that Thank sits you. right here with me. Thank so you. all right, we'll be back. Stay tuned. Well, wasn't that a great interview and just kind of conversation that Katie and I had? I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. She kind of did a little couple pokes to me, which was kind of fun. Uh, But it's true. You know, it's time to start planning the right way and thinking about what you want to do, saving for that. Don't use the credit card. You know, live the lifestyle that you want to have. But at the same time, don't forget what your goals and, you know, for the future, whether they're one, two, three years from now or 10 years from now, which is a huge leap of faith. So, uh, with that, we're going to uh, follow up this week with a question that was sent in to us. And, and uh, Kayla here is in the background, and she's going to speak it out to me. So I hope you can hear it. If not, I'll repeat it. Go ahead, Kayla. What's the question this week? What is your best piece of advice for a young person who is just starting out to build credit and save money? My best piece of advice for someone that's young that's uh, trying to build credit and save some money. Well, one of the first things I would suggest is start to get some education. When was the last time you actually picked up a financial education book? Probably never. The reason that I wrote Wealth by Design, whether you're thinking about retirement right now or not, and if you're a young person, you're definitely not thinking about retirement, it gives you at least a foundation to start. So what's that foundation? Truly, one of the things that I'm going through right now is a, is a money certification program, and it's, a, it's another designation for me. It's kind of about peeling back the layers of what has your relationship with money been up to this point in life. So if you're young and you're thinking, gosh, where do I start? Well, where do I start? Number one, what's my relationship with money been like? 
How was I raised? What was my parents' relationship with money? Maybe aunts, uncles, grandparents. And pick up the good habits, try to avoid the bad habits. So what they told us when we were young is get a credit card and it'll help you establish credit. That's the one thing I say stay away from if you can, just because there's so many other ways that you can actually establish credit. Let's say you, you're going through college and you have some student loans. If you're even just paying a little bit of the interest on that, that establishes credit. If you are having a cell phone, which who doesn't have a cell phone today? A lot of kids, they have to pay for that cell phone themselves. Well, use that cell phone and pay that payment, pay it on time each and every month that's starting to establish your credit. You can also do what they call, um, uh, it's kind of like a, um, a card that a bank will create for you, but it's with a CD of money that you put into it. And right now the, the name of that escapes me, but let's say you put in $1,000, but to establish credit, you need to pay that $1,000 back, but you're doing this relationship with the bank. Even though it's your own money, it helps you establish credit. So do things that are maybe not the norm. Credit cards aren't the only answer. And literally, if you get a higher balance on that credit card, it could actually hurt your credit. And if you're late, God forbid you're late, that will definitely destroy your credit. So uh, it's a different place to play. Now, in addition, when we start to save money, think about what your habits are. Are you going to your favorite coffee shop a lot? Are you going to, um, uh, I'll pick up, I'll pick up my, uh, my stepdaughter for a second. Do you love concerts and you go to a lot of concerts? Well, how many of those could you plan for in your budget? And maybe right now you can't go to those, but how much of that could you plan for in your budget to start putting a little bit of money away? So if you're making so much money, then you know we should be looking, it used to be 10% of your money you should save. Now they're saying that if you're not saving at least 30% of your income, your gross income, not what you get in your paycheck, your gross income, so let's say you're making $1,000 a week, 30% would be $300. They say to save that because if not, we won't have enough to even keep us even as we get a little bit older, if we want to save for buying a house, if we want to uh, pay off those student loans, if we want to, um, like I said, try not to have a relationship with a credit card because lifestyle today, you have to pay for tomorrow if you don't have enough money to pay for it today. So kind of figure out your budget with literally putting about 30% of your money away because that emergency fund is so important. What's an emergency fund? It's the what if, you know, what if life happens? Um, usually like for a car, I say, it depends on what that situation looks like. You have, you have to take care of your oil change. You might need new brakes. You might need new tires. How often do you need this? Is it once a year? Is it once every two years? Think about what that amount is that that costs versus just saying, I have to alter my lifestyle the months that I need it or put it on a credit card and try and pay it off. Put that money away for that emergency account. Sometimes it's $1,000, sometimes it's 2000 sometimes it's 3000 Whatever that number is that you've determined that that costs for you, know, for you um, put that into an emergency fund just for that because those things happen all the time. Then we talk about in Chapter 5, a wealth recovery account. Where can you recover wealth to actually save? We don't want to just save for an emergency fund. We want to save for potential of investing and growing our portfolio. So hopefully that makes some sense. Stay tuned because next week we'll have another great episode. And again, if you haven't gotten a copy of our book, it's such a great read. It's simple. If you don't want to read it, you can actually get the audio version. But go to Elizabeth with an S, Dawson.com. Click on the link for the book and get your copy. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. See you next week. The information provided in this show is for informational and educational purposes only. This show is not investment advice, nor is it intended to address the financial needs of any particular viewer. The opinions expressed on this show are not intended to be an endorsement of any particular investment strategy or service of any other kind. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned throughout the show. Before acting on information in this show, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular situation and strongly consider seeking advice from a financial advisor.